What's going on, Show Nation? It's Movie with Movie Gaming TV. Today, I am joined by Corey from the Show Zone, the creator of the Show Zone. To me, this is a website you guys need to have bookmarked on your computer, on your phone, along those lines. This is just a, a great, great resource for MLB The Show. And I am pleased to have Corey with me here today to talk a little bit about, well, to talk a little bit about the show zone and uh this is not an ad or anything like that i just love this site so much i really wanted to reach out to Corey to uh let you guys you know he's gonna know the site even better than i would since he made it and uh Corey, what's going on man say say hello to everybody how's it going, movie? How's it going show nation okay uh so uh Corey, i gotta ask you uh when, when did you start playing MLB The Show? What what was kind of like, uh, how did the, how did the show zone start? Yeah, so I actually started playing uh, MLB The Show back in uh, the show 16. I you know I don't I was always an Xbox guy and I just couldn't take it anymore not having a baseball game, um, and so I broke down, bought a PS4, and kind of got hooked on it after playing uh, playing the game with my buddies and everything, um, and then really uh, the show zone kind of actually started somewhat back on uh, the show 18 back with immortals you know everybody remembers the immortals um and really with all those different exchanges and things like that you had to do with souvenirs and those kind of things i started actually creating you know different excel sheets and doing data pools and doing those kind of things and sending them out to my friends group um and that's kind of what originally set the base for it but then in, in the show 19 is really when uh the site kind of started spinning up where i started doing some html tables and setting up a little server sharing with my friends and then eventually uh, launched the site almost a year ago today. Uh, launched the site after the Honus release a couple of years or last year. Uh, you know, to let the community really see what that collection cost was going to be. I knew it would be a good time to launch. So um, that's kind of the general timeline. And of course, the thing's just grown and grown and grown ever since. That is so awesome. And uh, another thing I found extremely fascinating. We were talking. Uh, if you guys don't know, I actually have a uh, I have a, uh, an associate's degree in uh, web development and digital media. And I, I know what it's like to do some coding, but you said that you learned this all on your own, how to code a website, everything like that, which is just extremely impressive to me. And I think it's a, it's actually very motivational in a way. So how did you go about that process? Like where, where did you start with that process to make all of this to put, I, I think this is extremely sophisticated. I just, I know the back end. like what, what's some, what are some of the back end languages you use? What are the, some of the things that you learned? Where, where's the place that people can go to learn more about if they want to make something like this in the future? It doesn't necess necessarily even have to be with it, but be the show, but just, it's, it's amazing to me that you put this all together. Uh, just with the uh, hard work. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. And really thank God for YouTube. Thank God for Google. <laughs> You know, that's, that's really where everything kind of came from. Um, you know, I do have, I have a degree in electrical engineering. So I had, a, I had some classes in college, but uh, not really on web development or anything like that. So I spent a lot of time on YouTube, a lot of time on Stack Overflow, a lot of time on W3 schools, just learning and grinding and figuring a lot of this stuff out. Um, and so really, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, you know, this isn't my, my day job. So I had to kind of build something and work with something that was, easy for me to use and easy for me to maintain. Um, so the site is actually built off of WordPress, uh, kind of crazy. And a lot of people are somewhat shocked to hear that, but the site's actually built on WordPress. Um, and I have some really killer plugins and things like that that I communicate with. So my maintenance on the front end and things like that isn't too bad. And I can kind of just focus on the data, getting the data right and getting uh, you know information that the community wants and needs out on the site without having to focus too much on development. That's that's really interesting to me as well. That's uh one of my favorite classes I took was called like uh content management systems, and so like uh I I, I think that's a, a really smart way of going about it because I think what a lot of people don't understand about the web today is there's not a lot of coding from scratch, right. even though that there is. It's like you really a lot of that's already been done. Now it's time to be able to use the content management systems like WordPress that we have and uh kind of uh tailor it to what you wouldn't what you need to do and uh, so you were able to utilize a lot of plugins i feel like um are you using like it feels like you're using like a lot of back-end data oh, yeah. uh it's like you're drawing from other data and putting it all together 
the site looks really really good um i have a question just even looking at the site itself like i'm looking at um you know the uh the players the affinity dashboard which we're going to get into later but are you pulling like the images from somewhere? Did you have to upload like you know like the a the Atlanta logo logo or I'm on the Affinity page right now? Yeah. Uh, the logo of like or the picture of Ozzy Albies. Did you have to draw those in and you have to upload them to the yeah, site? Yeah, they're all hand drawn. No, I'm just messing with you. Really? <laughs> no, no, really, all the data and everything is coming from the show nation. Um, it's just I run through whenever basically whenever they update the the player pool and their database, I go through. So pretty much whenever you see something pop into the, into the into your inventory, I'm going through and pulling down hyperlinks to all those images and pulling down data on all those players and then reformulating overalls and reformulating pricing and those kind of things. Um, but essentially, it's all being pulled from the show nation. So all those images are just direct links. So if they ever go through um, and update you know, a player image or anything like that or update a logo, it's going to update automatically. Like I said, I need something low maintenance. Yeah, I I really was when I first got to the site, I was extremely blown away. Uh, just how clean it was. I love how like just uh, in a way uh, minimalistic it is. Like there's not a lot of BS. It's just it gets you straight to what you need to to see. Um, I did see uh that you do have an ad at the top, which makes me happy because <laughs> you've put in so much work on this to see so you get a little bit of revenue back. I see at the bottom of the page here, guys. If you'd like to support the show nation or the excuse me the show zone on patreon there is a button to become a patron um i was even thinking the other day like dude you could easily charge like five to ten dollars a month for this site it's that good guys it is that good i say uh let's get into some of these features and talk about uh, some of the stuff on here because uh first we can start with the players which i find is what i find interesting is you do have uh, the true overalls, and you guys can see we got the tr the true overall of Mickey Mantle, Prestige Mickey Mantle. That is rated at 109.08. And also that new Larry Walker that just came out, he is a 108.02. How did you uh, how did you come across uh, these numbers? Yeah, so really, you know, after you know so many years of playing the show, I realized, man, there are so many 99s in this game, especially going back into like 19 and or going back into 17, really. There were so many 99s. It's like I was struggling to make a decision between one player or another. Um, so I did a bunch of data analysis and came up with a, an, a what's called a regression analysis on all the different players in their database um, and came up with formulas for each of the different positions that basically, you know, applies a formula to their actual rating. But then the key is I took off the cap at 99. That way then now you can see really what a player's actual overall rating is uh, instead of it just stopping at 99. So you can it really starts to separate those elite players from one another and really makes guys like Larry Walker and guys like Mantle just pop out. Got uh, the prestige Al K line up there, prestige Biggio, prestige Mike Schmidt uh, as well. Uh, I like... So it does take off the cap. What what are some of the um what are some of the attributes that you uh so I was I was curious if uh for example for Mickey Mantle, do you factor in like his ability to bunt or his clutch or anything like that? Some of those kind of like stats that really don't factor in too much into Diamond Dynasty, or did you take everything as a whole and put it in and there? Everything except individual pitch attributes are factored into the three overall. Um, so for your pitchers and stuff, you know, those individual pitcher attributes really don't factor in, but the velocity control and break of that pitcher do. Um, but everything else is, is a factor. Yeah. Like some of them like bunting or drag bunting, they're not going to move the needle too much outside of some of your like dedicated speed kind of positions where things like shortstop or second base are a little bit more focused on speed, but each position has a different weight on each of those. So for example, it's a lot easier you know, if you have high power, um, you know, it's really going to impact you at a position like first base where you really need somebody with power um, versus it's not going to have, that, you know, that much of an impact at, at a shortstop or something like that because it doesn't have as much weight as things. Like that. That's fascinating. I actually, uh, I didn't even know that uh, the bunting on a different positions factored into their overall, uh, like if uh, you had a high bunting first baseman, it doesn't affect his overall as much as a, uh, a short side that's interesting i did not know right. that and if you take a look at bellinger so like bellinger 
through through me and a few people in the community for a loop because his true overall rating is pretty low. Um, and that's primarily because he's a primary first baseman. And so like his speed and his arm and his defense really don't matter that much at first base. And so people were like, how in the world is Cody Bellinger only a 93? Um, and I'll go over that on, an, on the next page here pretty soon. Um, but once you actually start rating him in a different position, like left field or center field, um, he really starts to play up to his actual rating. I see. I'm, I, and what's nice is I can just type right into the search box. It pulls up the 98 overall Cody Bellinger, the prestige version, the 97 and the 90. And you guys can see his true overall instead of being a 90 is an 88. And that's because he's at first base. I mean, that's just, uh, if you, if you ever really wanted to compare cards, you wanted that deeper rating and trying to decide between one or two cards, uh, this can really help you out and get you, uh, get you some knowledge about what their true overall would be. Um, if you wanted to take it even deeper, you could get into this. Does this guy have a good swing or a right. not good swing? But I think that's kind of going to be something that everybody also at the same time has to, you know, try out that card and see if you feel good with their swing and all that kind of stuff too. So that's kind of a subjective thing, but this is going to give you more of the, um, the, the, uh, the exact data of the math, which I really, really like. And and it makes you think about, you know, different cards that m maybe uh, the eye test has them lower than what they really are potentially. So um, I, I really like that part of things. Then we also have the equipment tab. And now uh, why don't you explain uh, a little bit about the equipment tab? Corey. Yeah, actually, actually, real quick, movie. I wanted to go. You mentioned something about the search bar. I wanted to bring something up about sure. the search bar. Is uh, man, that's that's like the key to a lot of these tables. Um, and and you know, I tried to use a similar structure across the entire site. So if you're looking for anything, type it into that search bar, and it and it searches the entire database, and filters everything down. And so even on some of those tables and on the player tables, and you may not even be aware of this movie movie, but. Uh, if you click the little eyeball there is on the top right of the table there's a lot of there's some hidden columns that i'm just not showing on the front and that search bar searches even the hidden columns so if you want to just find oh wow yeah, so if you even want to find like <laughs> i want to see all players so for example i got a lot of friends from puerto rico and a lot of them like to build teams based around guys from puerto rico so if you just want to search puerto rico it will pull in every player from puerto rico and you could do the same thing with other states across the u.s if you want to make an all Ohio team, if you want to make an all California team, um, anything along those lines, it searches everything. Oh, wow. That, that is, uh, that is great, man. Um, are there any other features? Like uh, we gotta admit, I gotta make sure I ask you that question, uh, for the other features. We got secondary analysis on the pitchers. I didn't even, and we got hitters, pitchers, similarity, crowdsource stats. Uh, make sure you guys click that columns uh, tab as well. I mean that that would be great for people making right. theme teams and all kinds of stuff. That's uh that's fantastic. Look at all these different things that have been brought in. That that is great, man. Um, let's see what we got. Uh, secondary analysis. Yeah. Secondary analysis is honestly that is that is my favorite page on the site. You know, it's really funny. I launched the affinity dashboard I think last week or earlier this week. Um, and, yeah. and, uh, some, one of the members of the community reached out to me and said, Hey, is there any way, you know, with that true overall, if you can calculate somebody at their secondary. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's completely possible. And then I started thinking oh. about it and I was like, Oh so yeah, that's really what this that's great, shows, man. Is it's every player in the game's true overall rating recalculated, including the fielding penalties at their secondary. And so, man, this is killer. Cause I, I really wanted to find that out for myself. So I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to start BGO at catcher. And so you can actually filter there on the position. And so anything that's a secondary position has a lowercase s to it. You can filter there on the position for people that are at catcher primary and catcher secondary. And see everybody that's there and what their actual overall rating is there calculated based on their secondary. So we, it looks like we had, uh, I went by catcher. Um, oh, well, wait a minute. Let me go by like, uh, so I clicked a uh, position and then I clicked on catcher. Um, yeah. How did you, how were you able to see, uh, I click, maybe I want to click out to uh second baseman. 
let's see. Let me click to overall. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so if you go to the, uh, I think if you're on the secondary position, are, are you on the secondary analysis page? Yeah, I'm on the second. Let me refresh this page. I was going to try to filter by the position and go to catcher to see where Biggio was at. Because I'm actually, uh, I'm curious about that as well. If I float down a little bit, let's see. Prestige Craig Biggio, second baseman. Now, what do I click to uh, filter him to see him as a catcher compared to the other so, catchers? So if, you go to, if you go to the position column and hit the filter button, you can select uh, both catcher and then there's a catcher, a C with a lowercase s. And so that indicates a secondary position. And so you can check both of those. Okay. Oh man. All right. All right. And that's, so that's we got, my favorite thing. we got Buster Posey at the top of that with a one Oh two nine Joe Torrey, one Oh two seven six, which I've noticed the site likes Joe Torrey does, quite a bit. It does. He's just, he's balanced. It, it threw me off too. When I saw that, cause I, I don't like using him just because of his swing. I just don't like it. But man, it, it loves him because of his vision and because of his just balance all across the board. It's got, and then it's got uh, Jason Kendall rated pretty high too. It actually has him just a, a little bit above Craig Biggio. And that, but that's, that is the prestige Craig Biggio. I personally like to, I like Buster Posey a lot and I like Craig Biggio. Those would be my two. And I, apparently Joe Torre is underrated. Even prestige Jason Kendall might be underrated too, uh, to be honest with you. So, that gives you a good a good place. It has Matt Weeters uh, uh, up there as well. We got Pablo Sandoval up there. Um, very very solid. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the hitters. Uh, I think that's probably going to be. Oh, we got a, a nice chart up there at the top, and then we got uh, basically. I guess it's just going to filter out the pitchers uh, type of deal. If you're just trying to look for some better hitters to add to your team. And I, and I did throw some conditional formatting because I'm really only showing like the primary stats that you'd see when you'd pull up that player view um, for hitters. But I did throw some conditional formatting on there. So basically anyone that's over 100, um, I gave him that prestige red. Anything that's anybody that's between an 85 and a 99 is getting that diamond blue, you know, gold, silver, bronze, uh, and then common doesn't have any sort of color on it. But that way you can kind of see really where your, your uh, you know, your best hitters are and just compare them all. I like that. That's great. And then uh, we also have uh, a tab for pitchers here under players. Yep. Same kind of concept there. Nice. And then uh, we got similarity. Yeah. This. The following. This, All right. Go yeah, ahead. This, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Good. This this one's fun. Um, essentially, this one I ran. At, I run every time I update the database. I run a massive matrix that basically compares every card in the game to every other card in the game. And so it provides similarity scores. And so this is kind of what I like to call like the ball on a budget page where, you know, like if you want mantle, but you don't have the subs to collect mantle, you can search um, for mantle there on the card. Um, and it will bring up his prestige, his prime and his rookie version. And you can see which other players are the most similar. So you see, you know, the first one is obviously his prestige is most similar to his prime, but the second most similar is like Larry Walker and the prestige and signature Larry Walker. So if you want somebody that plays similar to Mantle, Larry Walker is probably your closest bet. I got you. So for Tony Gwynn, he actually plays similar to Ryan Sandberg, if I'm following right. this correctly, at Rock Rue. Ryan Sandberg to Andre Dawson and Barry Larkin. Uh, Jackie Robinson to Minnie Minoso, Rod Carew, Lou Brock. Uh, very, very cool. So you can get, you know, I, I like that concept. Jeff Bagwell being close to Chipper Jones is interesting. Um, you know who reminds me of Chipper Jones too is, uh, that new Matt Williams card that we got. They looked very similar to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously Chipper has that real smooth swing though. That kind of takes him up over the top. Definitely, definitely. Now we got the crowdsource card stats. I w w the crowdsource card stats. W what's going on here? Yeah. So so this one, you know, this was actually initiated. I had a Penn State data science student actually reach out to me. He plays a show and loved the website. And so he was like, "Hey, what if we tried something like this, where we went out to the community and asked them to fill out a form on how their players are playing online?" And so. Essentially, that hyperlink there goes to a Google form. 
fill out that Google form on your player stats and how they play online. And then this data summarizes itself and shows basically how everybody's playing with each of those players online. So what we want to do is eventually take that, and I'm working with him now to take that and kind of reformulate the true overalls to be more of like a, you know, this isn't necessarily how that player's attributes are going to be reflecting, but this is how uh, we're expecting this card to play in reality. You know, we're expecting you to have a slugging percentage of over a thousand with prime Nicky Mantle. You know, things like that. Now, if you guys are watching this video, uh, this is just why I'm so blown away by this site. That's incredible. So you guys are taking data of how everyone's using the uh, using the cards, and you're bringing that in so that people can make decisions and getting those stats all together. It's just like that's above and beyond man that is above and beyond like I, that is just so fantastic like i i, I cannot wait i'm definitely 100 percent filling out this form if you guys want to fill out this form as well the players tab crowdsource stats and then just click the google form man that's what an idea dude and that's gonna go that's gonna factor into their true overalls it's gonna get i mean that's just like tons and tons of tabulation of people being able to use the card bring in their stats that's uh that's great man that that's it i'm just sitting here as we're doing this and that is, that is just fantastic yeah. I, I love to see I that man I, I was pretty pumped when when the kid reached out to me and brought up that idea that that happens so often a lot of the things that i've built on this site are just people engaging with me and you know i'm a member of the community just like everybody else and i'm playing the game just like everybody else you know so whenever somebody comes to me i'm like yeah i love it you know let's go after so anytime anybody notices or thinks anything, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, one thing I wanted to shout out as well is you do have an Instagram page. Uh, guys, make sure that you f if you follow this and you, you post new updates about the site and everything over there, uh, MLB The Show Zone over on Instagram. Uh, uh, definitely, definitely go give a follow over there as well. Um, we're going to take a look at uh, the equipment page yet and uh, what's going on with the equipment yeah, the page. the equipment page is pretty similar to the player page just in that it basically has every attribute or every piece of data on those pieces of equipment in the system. So if you're wanting to find out, you know, basically how you can generate the most power for your cap, you know, this is the place to do it. You can just filter by slot, you know, if you're looking for bats, if you're looking for you know, compression sleeves, you know, whatever you happen to be looking for, you can filter it down and it puts all that data on there. Um, so eventually this is kind of like the base, at least at this point. But what we're wanting to do, and at least what we have plans to do in the future is make a cap builder, essentially, where you can go in and you can say, I want this bat, I want this, you know, bat, or I want this uh, bat grip, I want this compression sleeve, I want this ritual. And then it will summarize all of those different data points and then add those to each of the different created players. And then you can see what that actual true overall of that player is going to be um, with all the equipment boosts and everything like that on it. So you can kind of start to plan out, uh, you know, what your cap is going to look like. I'm literally sitting here just nodding my head in agreement as we record this. It's someone that has done all that by hand, gone through, added it all up, like in a notepad on the calculator on my computer. That would be a, a, just an amazing function for uh, for this, man, for, for MLB The Show, to be able to create a cap, put on the equipment, see what your overalls are at, decide if you want this or want that. Uh, that would be phenomenal. You know, you could have like the balance or the power. Like right now, in my head, a lot of people have asked me, like, should I make a balance catcher or a power catcher? Uh, I I use I use personally a balance shortstop. I'm making a balance second baseman, mm -hmm. but then I would have uh, you know just having that data for any any position and being able to use that builder would just be phenomenal. Uh, that would be great. I I think that would be just fantastic if we could get that, especially if in the you know, if we go to the next game and more stuff changes with the creative player, like, uh, man, that, that's a great idea. I love seeing that here. Uh, even just to be able to, to add it up with what we have right now is great too. Right. And so, uh, and, and that's kind of where, I, what I want to do eventually too, is just to take that same concept and then build in like an optimizer. You know, I have a hundred thousand subs to spend on cap equipment. How can I maximize this player's overall given the equipment that's out there? Or how can I maximize power? Or how can I maximize vision? You know, just depending on what exactly I want. 
So that's kind of some of the other stuff that we're considering to throw in there too. Sounds like some great ideas. Now, uh, if you guys are still putting together the uh, collections, we've got the live series in the uh, prospect collection page. Let's take a look at the live series page. Yeah, so this one's broken down by a couple segments. So we got the really cool chart there across the top, kind of looks like a stock chart. But essentially what that's showing is just the historical live series collection cost over the last week. I have all the data from, you know, the past, well, pretty much since launch. And so I show some of that on my Instagram and show just how some of the different things have impacted the market. And obviously right there on the screen right now, you can see what happened during Team Affinity 3 when it basically, you know, everything kind of tanked. Uh, yeah, the dramatic fall. Right. And, and, but at least, you know, the way, I, at least that I use this is it lets me see, you know, market peak and market valley. So for the most part, it seems like the market is generally lowest at around 6 a.m. and at the highest around 6 p.m. And that's kind of the way that I use that historical chart is to just see when the best time is to buy certain players. That's a question I've always wondered myself. So you said at 6 a.m. it's at its lowest and 6 p.m. it's at its highest? Generally, yeah. But when you have things like new content get dropped, you know, it, it kind of wrecks that concept. But for the most part, yeah, if you're buying at like 6 a.m. on a Tuesday, you're probably getting the best price you can get. That's, uh, that's awesome. You, I feel like uh, just by running the back end of this, you've got to know so much about the game right. in a way, man. Holy shnikes. Uh, let's go ahead and, uh, so we got, uh, you know, there's the, we got the cost, we got the sub reward to sell now. This is, uh, and there's so many people too, as I, I stream and make videos, you know, they ask me, uh, you know, how much does the live series collection cost? Because that's kind of, in my opinion, that's, that's like the first thing that you should try to tackle if you're going to play, be playing like uh, Diamond Dynasty long term is getting the collections done. So this can give you a good gauge of like what everything's at uh, in regards to that. And uh, that that's a great tidbit of information. And also you can see like the, the it's just fascinating to see like how much uh, it's cost over uh, a period of time there. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the prospects tab. Yeah, prospects are, it, it's the same concept, um, but it's just a little bit of a different structure since you kind of have those different collection, um, you know, where you can collect five and you can collect 10 and you can collect all of them for Wander Franco. So it's a similar concept, but just applied to prospects. And so you can see the buy nows and sell nows there in the different colors. Um, and then just the different rewards are, are structured just a little bit differently since the live series collection is a little bit different. That thing is actually getting somewhat affordable at this point in time if you want that Wander Franco. Yeah, I know when it was launched, I think I think Wander was something like 400 or 500,000 or, or something, like, something like that along those lines. So a lot more reasonable. Yeah. Those pictures were so popular at the beginning too. Like it seemed like everybody was using like Kopec and uh, Pearson and Mize and all that stuff as well. Um, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the new, the new Affinity dashboard, man. And uh, someone, I, I've almost got all of Stage Three to one hundred percent because I played this game like <laughs> way too much. But uh, this this is a this is a great thing right here. We got the affinity dashboard, stage one, stage two, stage three. I like how you put that all together because this is a good spot. If you know if you're not going to be able to do all the affinities and you kind of like want a spot to see all three of the cards and their true overall right next to it, like across the board. Like say for instance, you want to do uh, the Cleveland Indians, you know, get a switch hitting catcher in Santana. You want to get Nolan Jones, who has a lot of pop, and you want to get that new Jim Tomey. You can see like all three of their cards at one time, plus the exchange option options button. So, uh, how how was the process of putting uh, this Affinity dashboard all together? This is uh, I really like this a lot. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny how this one worked out. Uh, you know, when I I think I had released some content on my Instagram uh, when Team Affinity Two came out and basically showed content really similarly, it's just in Excel, and I was outside mowing the grass. Uh, you know, like Saturday or the Sunday before they launched Team Affinity 3. And I was thinking about, oh, I need to update that spreadsheet um, and post that to my Instagram. And it hit me. I was like, wait a minute, why am I not making this on the site? Um, and so I sat down that Sunday ahead of the Team Affinity 3 launch and programmed together the dashboard um, and then and then launched it out. So that was kind of the thought process that went behind it was just making a one-stop shop uh, when it came to Team Affinity so that way everybody could see you know, all the Team Affinity unlockable cards um, across the board. And then the really icing on the cake is that exchange options button 
So when you click that button, it then jumps you over to our exchanges page where it then automatically filters the exchanges table uh, based on the team that you're trying to complete. So if you're trying to complete the Braves, you click that exchange option button, it moves you to the next table that automatically has that thing already filtered down to what players that you can exchange for that thing. And then you can filter by rarity and so on and so forth with direct hyperlinks to the show nation. So it just kind of came together over time, but um, it was just one of those things that, you know, it's one of those just random thoughts that you kind of get and just go to town on it. Yeah, I, <clears throat> that, that's great. And, uh, I, when I was, uh, on the site looking at it after I saw it on Instagram, I love the exchange options button auto filters immediately to that team that you need. Um, if you're really counting every single <laughs> stub out there, this will tell you that exact math you need to do. Those lower common cards, actually, I shouldn't say lower common cards. I should say higher common cards. You know, the 64s and 63s, they've been pretty steady as that good option to go through. Sometimes I will use it, too, to see, like, we got, like, I'm looking uh, right now for the Blue Jays, and they have uh, Erasmus Garcia. Uh, sometimes I like to see, like, what's the good, like, 70, 71, 70, 69, 69 overall type of cards to see, basically... Sometimes instead of doing the 63 or the 64, that perfect number, I'll go a little bit higher in the overall so I can get it done a little bit faster. But if you're going through like the exact overall, so I use it for both things. Sometimes I'll get the 64s. Sometimes I'll get the 70 overalls uh, just, to, just to speed it up. So like there's a variety of ways that you can use this as a resource, in my opinion, the uh, the exchange rate, which is just which is just great. That's what I like to use it for myself. Right. Yep, and that, as I use it the exact same way. And, and then with having the links right there to the Show Nation, you just click that button. It takes you right to that player's page on the Show Nation, and you can just start immediately putting in buy orders for those different cards. Um, so it just, That's I, I use it myself. <laughs> like, you know, I've, I've built a lot of this stuff, you know, for the community, but at the same time, like, I'm sitting there grinding away too, trying to grind out these, these team affinities doing the same thing. That's great. Uh, who are some of the players on your team? And, what 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 uh, kind of team are you rolling with so this with year? So with some good investments, uh, you know, I, I do have Mantle. So I'm I'm rolling with Mantle and left, Bellinger and center, or I'm sorry, Bellinger and right. And then I've got Eric Davis as a Reds fan. I had to have Eric Davis. So, you know, the new future of fran or face of franchise, Eric Davis in center. Um, and then uh, third, who, who's at third? Um, can't remember who I have at third, but I think I think maybe Ryan Sandberg. Uh, but I'm feeling real good about my squad right now since I just got Mantle and I'm grinding out some of these face of the franchise players, especially with John Smoltz uh, leading the rotation now and having Jim Tomey at first. Uh, lineup's really starting to get loaded. Nice, man. And then the, uh, the a Reds fan. I'm a Royals fan myself being in Kansas City. Uh, the Reds, man, they, they, they're trying to put it together this year, man. I think they, uh, they got a real shot to make the playoffs. I think they're going for it this year. We'll have to see how it goes in the, with the season, with everything going on. But still, uh, the Reds could be uh, – might be playoff bound this year. Uh, I know. I'm, I'm hyped. I am hyped for this year. They do look good. They got Bauer, you know, feeling good. That's great. Uh, so, basically, uh, we're, we're on the exchanges. I'm going to go to the exchanges page now. Uh, if you go to the exchanges tab and you click Team Affinity, now you're going to be on the main exchange. It's going to show you, like, the best exchanges in the game. That's what makes the Affinity dashboard so powerful is it automatically will filter for you. I know that I would imagine that this part of it, because uh, I've been to this part of the site in, in the past, now this one would just not, it would just have, like, literally the best exchange rate over all the teams, correct? Right. Right. So if you're looking, so, yeah, so even if you're just trying to, to do any sort of other exchange, this one is probably the best way to go. Just jumping right to that page because it's not filtered down anymore. Yeah. So it's got the, you know, if you're just looking, if you don't have, if you're trying to go through basically any team, you don't, you're just, you're planning on doing a lot of teams. Um, you know, you're planning on doing all, um, basically all the teams. This would be a good place to uh, start out because you're going to get that best rate. And then we also have tier to tier, which is uh, a thing. That people can use to, you know, you want to see what the uh, cheapest card is to exchange or the best cards to exchange to uh, go up to the next level. Do you want to explain that a little bit? Yeah, Corey? this this page is pretty cool, actually. And this one, you know, at least the core of it kind of came with uh, somebody that messaged me on Instagram with some ideas. Um, but essentially there at the top, I have outlined what the current median prices are for each of the different live series card rarity tiers. So, you know, right now the median price for a diamond is what, 5,100 $5, sell now, 5,930 um, buy now. 
And so then I'm taking those median prices and then loading those up against what the overall cost would be for to exchange, um, you know, like a silver to a gold player. So right there at the top, you've got Yasiel Puig um, costing 264 stubs um, with a 47.75 exchange value. So you'd need about four of him to complete an exchange that would cost you right around a thousand stubs. And then the median return there is automatically pulled in from that table. So you can expect, you know, you know, a, about 1200 stubs from a gold. So by finishing that exchange, you know, you can make a couple hundred stubs off of it. Um, and so you can see the same thing there with the bronze to silvers, with the common to bronze. Um, and, and really, you can make a decent amount of stubs by doing just these standard exchanges. Yep, and th that that is definitely the idea uh, for sure. Especially um, um, a different, de definitely like I feel like exchanging at the the early part of the year is like a good way to make stubs. It's gonna as cards come down in value, it's gonna change up a little bit, but it's still you still can make stubs doing this. You still can make stubs doing this with uh, the Yasiel Puig. You know, go get some Yasiel Puigs, exchange them put them into um you know exchange them for the gold packs open up the gold packs and you can get that uh median return back so that's uh the, I, I like that part of it too man that was smart to put it in a tier to tier for the exchanges now now we're gonna get to my favorite part of the site <laughs> i imagine it's a lot of people's yeah and, and that is the flipping um i'm a big big fan of this uh I've talked about this in some of my videos before where I've talked about the site. Uh, this is what I really, really like is the flipping and uh, the flipping, what it basically does, uh, there's a column that says profit per minute. So right now the profit per minute on flipping Aaron judge is extremely high. <laughs> uh, there's some good flipping going on with that. Uh, some of them are high diamonds. Now guys, when the cards, when the cards really get up into a lot of high diamonds, it's going to take a lot more stuff to invest to flip. I'll tell you, this is another filter that I really like to use to look at. And I like to use, uh, you got to click on it once and then click on it again. You guys can see, actually, if we click on it this time, you guys can see the sales per minute on cards like Dwight Evans, uh, Trevor Hoffman. And that's the Dwight Evans. That was the BR reward. The Edgar Martinez BR reward. They barely sell at all. Uh, they, they just do not sell. Maybe like one or two sell a day. But I like to filter from the sales per minute and see what's going through uh, fast because that's kind of the way I like to flip. And so we got Garrett Anderson's selling a ton. Tino Martinez is selling a ton. Todd Frazier, Cal Ripken Jr., Aaron Judge, Jason Giambi, Luis Gonzalez, Dave Parker. And then we got Giancarlo Stanton, uh, Corbin Burns, Blake Snell. Some of these golds that, I can, that are just moving through, that must be what people are exchanging for Team Affinity. If I can find a card like that, then I can, I know that I can like buy them and sell them quickly. Cause that's what people are buying out of the market. So I love the profit per minute. And when the new content drops and when I see a bunch of golds and silvers in profit per minute, that's what I'm going to flip. But then when I look at the sales, if I, I see a lot of diamonds in profit per minute, that's usually when I go to the sales per minute, I'll filter that back and I'll look for a lot of these golds and silvers that I can buy for cheap. I don't have to risk a lot to invest in. And I can flip quickly. Um, what do you like to use this section for, yeah, Corey? You, you hit the nail on the head, man. Uh, really, you know, I, I think it's the key here with this site is is everybody has this. You know, this site's free, so everybody's on there. Everybody's looking at the same thing. So it's really, really critical when you're using this to filter down to what you like to flip because other people are looking at the same info. And this is definitely the most popular page on the, on the site where I get the most hits. Um, so def definitely, I use I usually try to filter by rarity when I'm going in there. So if you go to the left side, um, filter down to like just silver. You know, I, I want to buy a lot of silvers uh, with a good margin, and so that's generally the way that I try to do it because I'm much a much more like passive type flipper. I don't really want to be sitting there monitoring things constantly. So I'll filter down to sil silvers and then you know sort by profit per minute. Um, and then just go through those links there on the show nation and just put in a few buy orders, um, a few buy orders at a time and just kind of walk down through each one. No, what? Oh, so the red, sorry about that. I got, I clicked on the rarity for the silver. I was going to ask you a question, but now it wouldn't make any sense. Now that I think about it. So what, it's not like a, it's not the rarity. It's not that this card is particularly rare. It's just like the different type of tier for right. the card. So it's yeah. 
Um, so you like to go with the, you can look at the silver and see the profit per minute on that. I want to see what the profit per minute is on sil silvers and gold. So I can, uh, I can almost just go that that's probably a that's a better filter almost than the sales per minute for me. Uh, Cause I like to, I like to filter the gold or I like to sell or flip the golds and the silver. So that would give me right to like what I would like to see data wise too. Right. Honestly, and, and that's why I put that um, on there because I'm the same way. Is I, I don't really want to, I don't want to be flipping diamonds, especially after I got mantle. You know, I don't got a ton of subs to work with right now, so <laughs> I got to start flipping some of these cheaper cards and and you know slowly make profit. And if you look at the sales for minutes, I mean, we the the diamonds that are really selling fast are the the new content diamonds. They're selling quickly, but it, you know we got the uh, excuse me, I gotta flip that back up up again. You know, the Garrett Anderson, the Tino Martinez, the Todd Frazier, Cal Ripken, et cetera, et cetera. Everyone's putting those into uh, the new sets. And uh, even a card like actually probably getting Jason Giambi and Luis Gonzalez could be extremely profitable. If you could put them in for five, eight, nine, nine, and then flip them for that seven, that's probably a really profitable move. So like those lower tier diamonds and sets, I actually really like to flip a lot. I remember flipping uh, Ryan Braun when he oh, came yeah. out. Those 150 program stars ones, um, you know, uh, when you get like that halfway pack where those cards usually sell for like five to six K, uh, the, actually the Tito Martinez and Todd Frazier and, uh, the Giambi and Luis Gonzalez would be great flips today. I'd, I'd really like to flip those cards a lot, but we're talking more about these cards that even, uh, is Garrett. Oh, so Garrett Anderson's a little bit lower too, but we're talking about the cards that are like you know, 80 K like here, I'll just use a card out of the top of my head. Like the world, the world series reward from season one, Rogers Hornsby, that card, you might have a little bit of a profit margin, but it's like, you're going to invest, you know, 30 K <laughs> to sit there and fl hopefully it flips and hopefully you can get that right order in there, but it might take a while. And it's, it's a hassle. You want stuff that's moving uh, quickly though. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I really, really like this part of the site. And now also there is the uh, equipment or did you have anything you wanted to say about the, the flipping of the players too? I mean, this is, this is, uh, this is like, just, this is really the next level part of it. So if you made it this far into the video, you now know some great knowledge. <laughs> it's going to help you out in the marketplace. Yeah. And the equipment page, we just added, um, I don't know, maybe a month or so ago, um, but we, and we kind of quietly added it just because uh, I, I kind of wanted to see how things worked out with the equipment side. Um, so it's still somewhat in development, um, but really it's that same exact premise as what's on the player page. We still have a few things that we want to add into there, um, but essentially it's that same exact kind of premise. You can filter down by rarity, and I don't have the images on there yet, but I'm working towards it. Um, filter down by rarity, by slot, by brand. Um, and then obviously have a, the direct links to the show nation there. What I, what I was using for this, uh, too, is I was kind of doing the sales for a minute. Also, uh, equipment just as a whole is the market's kind of crashed a little bit. Uh, it's come down, but I was using it to, uh, let's see, let me go to the sales for a minute and I'm going to go to, uh, the rarity. I'm starting to get better at using the site. I'm really, really glad <laughs> I was able to talk to you about this. Uh, so it looks like we actually got uh, some batting gloves that are up for sale. But I remember seeing like uh, socks, mm -hmm. uh, the sleeve, the sunglasses, and uh, socks, sleeves, sunglasses. I feel like I'm leaving one thing out. But basically, uh, those the the stuff that has like only like three or four items type of deal, especially like you know the sunglasses. There's only like four that I can think of off the top of my head, maybe five. Uh, two diamond, two, uh, gold and one silver. Uh, I was able to flip those a lot. Like when I noticed that like the market, sometimes the market just gets really, really stagnant. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, there's only high diamonds at the top of the profit per minute, the golds, you know, there's nothing really going on. Like it was kind of like that, that lull that we had before stage three mm -hmm. dropped and everything just kind of explodes. That's when I go over to the equipment page and make some moves and you can make some moves always in equipment too. If you want to get your stub count up. So uh, definitely make sure you guys check out the equipment page as well. And then uh, it looks like we got the archives for MLB The Show 19. So uh, you said it started at MLB The Show 18, but did things really get going at MLB The Show 19? Yeah. That's, I'm, that's, really, I'm really sad our paths did not cross uh, in MLB The Show 19 as well. Like, this has been... 
it's been going on. Really, I'm just I'm so happy that I got to talk to you today about this page because I'm such a big fan, yeah. man. I'm a huge fan of this Appreciate site. It. Yeah, we yeah we we launched back in 19. We we don't have a ton of data on 18 because it was mostly more of a, just a thing within my friends group. Um, but really for 19, yeah, we launched back in July last year. And so a lot of this data and stuff was available, but we didn't have things like the, da the, the affinity dashboard. Um, you know, we had all the exchanges and all the flipping pages. So if you were struggling to flip, that might've been why, <laughs> because people had that data last year towards the end of 19. Um, but yeah, we, we've been around for a little while. So yeah, if you want to check out how some of the players were in 19, um, you can check out that archives page. One of the things that is missing, though, is the true overall. And that's because that was something that we launched this year was uh, was the true overall rating. You can see how many 99s there are in that archives page. Um, so there's a ton of different people in there, especially once they release the finest program. And so that's why we wanted to launch the uh, true overall rating. Nice. Nice. I got you. That makes a lot of sense. All right. Well, uh, do you have any uh, final thoughts to... Um to share with everybody, Corey? Yeah, I just wanted to mention at least a couple of things that we're hoping to, to improve on the site. Um, you know, right now, all of the pricing and everything on the site updates every five minutes, um, but we're trying to make some improvements. And luckily with some, some generous patrons and everything, um, I think I'm gonna be able to start cranking down some of the ads and things on the site and then actually be able to boost our servers a bit. So we should be able to, to increase that speed to hopefully, you know, either just a couple of minutes or, uh, just immediate, you know, it's just automatic. Whatever is on the show nation is on the site. So we're making some improvements there. Um, some of the other things that we're wanting to launch here pretty soon are um, just from a data standpoint, I want to launch a, what's called a, pl a platoon finder. So essentially trying to find those two players that you can combine that end up combining to be a, a much better player. So like, for example, I've been platooning uh, monthly awards, Derek Dietrich and uh, prime Dave Kingman for a while at first base. And the pairing of those two make them like a 99 overall first baseman, you know, because of just the balance they have between righties and lefties. So we're wanting to launch something new uh, related to that. And then lastly, at least the thing that I'll mention is that um, I don't know if you know teamjuicer.com, but it's another flipping website. Um, I'm partnered with a guy that's running teamjuicer.com. And so he and I are working on something really big. Um, we're, we can't share too many details, but working on something really big. Um, so stay tuned to that, but you're, you're, you're going to see something really big happen here in, in the near future when it comes to just the overall MLB to show, show community and, and different companion websites and apps. That is, that is so awesome, man. I love the platoon idea. I had not checked out team juicer yet. I'm going to check that out. Make sure that and I cannot wait for the big reveal idea as well. Guys, make sure you guys follow over on Instagram, the show zone. It will be the show zone over on Instagram. And uh, also, if you guys love the site out there and you guys would like to support the show zone on Patreon, become a patron. Uh, make sure you guys sign up uh, for that to show some support. Corey, thank you so much for joining me today on this. Um, just, I, I love this site, man. I love what you guys are doing. As somebody that's in web development and digital media and loves them, will be the show is like, man, you put everything that I like in one website. And it's just, it, it's just, I, I uh, I'm still blown away, man. I, I love this site, and uh, thank you so much for your hard work, man. I really, really appreciate yeah. it. And uh, thanks for joining me yeah, too. Thank you. We appreciate that. Appreciate the time, movie. Alrighty, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, have a great day. Peace out.